In our last two videos, we've talked about expansionary fiscal policy and contractionary fiscal policy. One assumption I was making but didn't explicitly articulate in those videos was that in both those examples, the government was undertaking what was called discretionary fiscal policy. Discretionary fiscal policy is when governments get together and look at the economic situation in the country at a particular period of time and decide to enact changes to the level of government spending and taxation. These changes usually require government to agree and pass some bill or legislation aimed at either cutting taxes or increasing government spending or maybe raising taxes and decreasing government spending. However, this process of deliberation and debate and discussion could go on for months, sometimes even longer than that, before a government decides what it needs to do in terms of government spending and taxation in order to help achieve the macroeconomic objectives of full employment. Is there some kind of fiscal policy that happens more quickly, perhaps even automatically? And the answer is yes. We're going to be talking in this video about what's called automatic fiscal policy. These are the changes in government spending and taxation that happen automatically without elected officials having to get together and debate for months on end about what to do. Automatic fiscal policy is built in to a nation's government budget. Let me explain what I mean. First, we're going to look at a graph that you're probably never going to have to draw. I'm only including this graph on the left as an illustration of how Government spending and taxation change automatically when a country's real GDP changes in the short run. So to illustrate how this graph on the left works, we're going to actually work on the graph on the right, which is much more familiar to you. Let's assume, for example, that an economy starts at full employment. This economy is humming along, producing exactly the level of output that it should be producing. Nearly everyone who wants a job has a job. The economy is producing efficiently. It's growing at a stable rate. It has low and stable inflation, and it has full employment. But let's assume that this economy experiences a negative demand shock. There is a fall in aggregate demand, perhaps due to an unexpected increase in the exchange rate, causing the country's exports to become less competitive and shifting AD to the left as net exports fall. We're going to see a decrease in output to Y1, and we're going to see some disinflation or maybe even deflation as the price level falls to PL2. This economy is now in a recession. So what might happen automatically before all the months needed for politicians to get together and debate what changes they can make to taxation and government spending? What could happen automatically to help soften the economic shock caused by this decrease in net exports? Well, let's go over to our graph on the left now. Here we have a graph showing how the government's level of tax revenues and transfers, that's transfer payments, that's a type of government spending in which government gives money to people so that they can support themselves during periods of unemployment or periods of poverty, or perhaps to help buy food or provide accommodation or provide subsidies for people attending college or school. These are transfer payments. This is not government spending on infrastructure and technology and research and development. This is government giving money to people who need it during times of hardship. So how does government spending on transfers and how do tax revenues change automatically? when there is a decrease or an increase in real GDP. So we're going to assume that the full employment level of output occurred at a point where the government had what we call a balanced budget. Notice that tax revenue equals the amount spent on transfers. Now this is a bit simplified because in the real world, governments spend money on a lot more than just transfer payments, but we're going to keep it somewhat simple here and assume that the amount of taxes collected is equal to the amount of government spending on these transfer payments. Therefore, the budget balance is zero. What happens when real GDP falls? Well, real GDP falling means national income is falling. Therefore, there's less taxes being collected. Tax revenues are automatically going to decrease when people start losing their jobs and people's incomes start to fall. So as output falls to Y1, remember, okay, here we started a YFE, we had a balanced budget. As output falls to Y1, we're going to see tax revenues decrease as people lose their jobs and people's incomes start to fall due to reduced demand in the economy. So there'll be a decrease in tax revenues. So tax revenues fall. And as people lose their jobs and become unemployed and slip into poverty, there's going to be an increase in spending on transfer payments by the government. Government's going to automatically start providing more benefits to people who lose their jobs, and certain people who fall under the poverty line are going to start collecting things like welfare payments and other subsidies from the government to help them get by while they're in economic hardship. So tax revenues will fall at the same time that government spending on transfers rises. And we have a situation in which the government has a budget deficit. 
government is automatically going to slip into a budget deficit because government spending on transfers will be higher than tax revenues. This distance here represents an automatic form of fiscal stimulus. Recall that expansionary fiscal policy occurs when government spending increases or taxes decrease. Well, that happens automatically when a country experiences a recession. It doesn't require government to get together and implement what we call discretionary fiscal policy. It's going to happen anyway. So this is an automatic adjustment that occurs following a demand deficient recession. And the impact that this could have on the economy is to soften the negative demand shock. So we're probably not going to see a recession completely avoided. However, due to automatic stabilizers, we could end up in a situation in which the decrease in aggregate demand will be less severe than it would have been if there were not these social safety nets built into the economy. The fact that taxes automatically go down when people start to lose their jobs and people's incomes fall. The fact that government spending automatically starts to rise as people slip into unemployment or slip into poverty. And government will help soften the blow without any discussion or debate among elected officials in Washington or in Brussels or in London, wherever they are. Government policymakers tend to be very slow and non-responsive when it comes to economic shocks. Therefore, the time lags that are built in to fiscal policy can be avoided in the form of automatic fiscal policy. The fact that the economy will automatically soften its blow through the changes in government spending and taxation that take place following a recession. So what we end up with is a situation in which output falls, but not by as much as it would have. So Y2 is the result after automatic stabilizers have had a chance to soften the economic blow caused by the decrease in aggregate demand. Now what happens in the other situation? What if an economy experiences a demand pull inflation? Let's go ahead and illustrate that. So assume that instead of falling to AD1, aggregate demand is increased. Let's say there was a stock market bubble or a housing market bubble. Households spend more than they ever have in the past and AD increases to AD3. We now have a situation in which the economy is overheating. Well, is there anything that happens automatically to help prevent the economy from overheating too much or prevent inflation from getting too high? In fact, there is. And we're going to look at that over here now. As GDP increases, again, we have real GDP here, we're moving outwards, GDP is growing to a level beyond YFE, we're going to see tax revenues automatically increase. Firms are earning more revenues, households are earning higher incomes, unemployment is lower, more people have jobs, more people are earning wages, therefore more people are paying more taxes, the government automatically starts to collect more taxes. At the same time, fewer people are unemployed. Fewer people are in poverty. There's less need for government to spend as much as they were on things like food stamps or subsidies for low-income housing or unemployment benefits or Medicaid or any of the other benefits that people who are struggling in the economy would receive from government. There are just less people struggling in the economy when the economy is producing out here at a level of output beyond full employment, which I will call Y. So at Y3, we see tax revenues automatically increase and government spending on transfers automatically decrease. We now have a situation in which tax revenues are greater than government expenditures. This is a contractionary policy. Of course, it's not discretionary because it didn't require policymakers to get together and debate and discuss for months on end about what to do to try to prevent the economy from overheating. It's going to happen automatically. And this demand pull inflation which would have resulted from aggregate demand increase into 83, would have had PL3, is going to be mitigated. It's going to be softened. We're going to see less inflation than we would otherwise. The economy will not overheat by as much, call that 84, as it would have without these built-in automatic stabilizers. So what have we talked about here? This graph is getting pretty messy, but it's not that complicated. I could have done it in two different graphs. I chose not to. All we've shown is that when there's a decrease in aggregate demand, there are built-in stabilizers that will help soften the fall in output and help prevent deflation, perhaps, as tax revenues automatically go down when, out when output falls and employment falls. And government spending automatically goes up when people lose their jobs and people slip into poverty and start collecting government benefits. On the flip side, if output increases and AD shifts out to AD3, we're going to see tax revenues automatically go up and government spending automatically go down, helping soften the impact of the positive demand shock. Inflation will be lower than it would be without these automatic stabilizers built in. Fiscal policy is a great tool for policymakers 
to use. However, they often can't agree, and therefore these built-in stabilizers are there to make sure that an economy experiences less severe recessions and less severe inflation, thanks to the fact that tax revenues and government spending on transfers will automatically adjust when an economy experiences a contraction or an expansion in output. Here we go. One step at a time.